Mark, the Pac-12 today uh, didn't take any action on Andy, Eddie Vanderdoes on the punch against uh, Tyner slash Fisher from the game. Were you surprised by that, that he's not m missing any time? I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I, I still haven't even seen it, so I don't know. We, don't, we won't spend too much time on that. Yeah. Sorry. No harm, no foul. <laughs> huh? No harm, no foul? Well, there was a foul. Uh, but our guys, our guys did a good job in that game. There were a few, you know, a few times where retaliation was probably normal, and I thought, I thought our guys did a really good job keeping their cool. Mark, you mentioned after the Arizona game, coming back the next day with a response you wanted to see. Now, after a, a win, a big win at UCLA, has it been the same kind of thing this week so far? It's been better, you know, which has been encouraging today. Today was really hard, uh, very physical. Uh, uh, it was a, it was a quality quality practice um yesterday we did a little bit more uh, mental stuff trying to get get you know get fresh mentally and physically and it paid off today and i thought our guys came out and and, and were really good now we have to do that do that again tomorrow because you know it's a, a different challenge a new challenge uh but that from that standpoint of of you know reacting kind of the same after a win or a loss has been has been good we still have a you know a million things to improve upon Statistically, Washington has been real good defensively, but the Eastern Washington game, they gave up 52 points. I think uh, EW's quarterback had 475, mm -hmm. seven touchdowns. What do you make of that game? And do you take anything special away from that, considering that that guy's a dual threat guy and a spread system, just like you guys have? A little bit, but it it, it was weird. You know, when I, I kind of have a systematic way that I go back and look at games, and you, you, I started to get ready to watch that game, and I'm like, okay, here's, here's going to be some answers. And it wasn't just like they, you know – had a, a bunch of stuff or gave up a bunch of stuff other than huge plays. You know, there, there were a few very impactful big plays in that game, but it's not, you know, it's not something you can really easily recreate. Uh, there's there, one thing that they do great defensively is they don't, they don't give you anything. They don't, you know, they make you earn every inch. Uh, you know, their tendencies are very few and far between. They have a, this will be the biggest amount of scheme that we've played to this, this point as far as just, sheer number of fronts, games, coverages, pressures. Um, and so it's a, it's a different challenge that way. Uh, but yeah, and then all, all the other games, they've, they've been outstanding. Jay Allen. Coach, do you remember where you were or what you were doing when the pick happened? <laughs> well, I said, what, was it Sunday? When did we meet last? Sunday I said I was probably throwing a pick simultaneously, but I don't, uh, I don't recall exactly where I was. Uh, I probably should find out. I'll think about that. But well, yeah, a lot of people obviously would look at that at that play as you know the play, the pick, you know, kind of equivalent um, of of really launching to the you know not the BCS back then, but to to the Rose Bowl and and uh, making Oregon football. Oregon football, the O, and you know everything that that has has resulted from that. The total commit, you know, total commitment to facilities to to all the all the things that that. Uh, have have happened here because of what has happened before us. I think, you know, it wasn't obviously that one play, but it was certainly a huge deal against a rival. You know, in a in a in a big big situation. And Kenny Wheaton's actually going to play on Saturday too. A lot of people don't know that. Ryan Thurl, what's the hallmark of a Chris Peterson coach team? What what makes him so successful as a head coach? Um, I don't know what the hallmark is. I mean, they're very, you know, they're very well coached. They've got great, they've got great players. Uh, they've got great scheme uh, and they play hard, you know? And so those, those things we know we're going to, you know, we know we're going to get not very often, you know, not very often. I think we're, our, our philosophy on that is we want, we want great preparation and confidence from preparation. I think there's certain things, um, I think we talked after the, the Cal game last year, we never once ever practiced with a wet ball ever, you know, and, and, you know, some people I've, I've done that before and you've got a wet, heavy ball that you have, you know, your quarterback can't handle. Then everybody, you know, everybody doesn't get down the timing and then on game day, it's 75, you know, or, or whatever. Um, some guys, some guys throw it great in, in the rain. Some guys don't. Uh, there's, there's certain things that you can manipulate from a mechanic standpoint, but n not a ton. Um, and so we just, we just try to prepare great and have confidence in our preparation. Uh, and Gary Campbell gets cold easily. So that's one of the other big rings. Tyson. 
You guys had probably one of your best rushing games of the year on Saturday. Uh, I know something that Gary's talked a lot about is guys uh, doing better in one-on-one -on -one situations and breaking those kind of arm uh, ankle tackles. When you guys went back and looked at the tape, was that was Saturday's success more of a product of the running backs improving or was it you know, just the fact that the line played better overall? I think both those things and, and all those things, the receivers blocked better, the, the line uh, blocked better. We were able to, to you know, the quarterback was a, a live element. The tailback was a live element. Uh, and it was a collective effort. You know, we, we, we made a commitment to it bigger in the game plan and, and uh, stayed patient with it. We're successful enough with it. Uh, that we could come back to it on second down, um, and and uh, that makes a huge difference. Tom Ward in the back. Back here, Mark. Um, when you look at their front seven and their defense, Washington's, it seems like they're improved and one of the better ones in the conference. And then Shaq Thompson uh, made a play the other day against Cal that seemed to turn that game when you talk yeah. about plays turning games. Yeah, I mean, their, their front seven, you know, they've always been, I think, what, five of those guys are seniors. And, you know, so it's the same same guys, and, and they're playing extremely, extremely well. Uh, I just, you know, I just said on the, the deal, you know, it's not it's not normal that you have to worry about keeping a defensive guy out of the end zone. But, I mean, Shaq is – it's been unbelievable his knack for for the ball and and collectively whether it's a tip or a forced fumble and him being in the right place i mean that that that's not just luck i mean that's that's guys making plays and a guy that really has a, a you know an incredible knack for the for the ball uh but that that all goes into their athleticism their size they're still physical you know and and athletic uh and then schematically they they put them in a, a bunch of different looks to create confusion, maybe a misstep by the, the O lineman or, or whoever's, you know, in charge of that guy. Well, how we practice, you know, is, is a big part of it. And then as, as far as how it's going to go in the game, uh, you know, part of that, part of that is game plan driven of, you know, Hey, we are absolutely going to commit to a, B and C, whether it's running the ball tempo, you know, whatever, whatever those things are. Uh, but then you have to have success, at them enough in the game to, to sustain that. And, and our guys did a good job again on first down, uh, staying out of third down, you know, being, being, being in first and second downs all day is the, is the goal, you know, um, that's easier said than done sometimes, or at least, you know, having, having the mindset that, that you can get that with, with kind of the base game run game type of, of, of things or the, the tempo throws that come off of that. Um, but, we just had our, our guys had a, a kind of a renewed commitment, I would say, and in, uh, in 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 training last week, and and so far the same thing this week. Jay Allen, coach, how are they different scheme wise on both sides of the ball under this new coaching staff? What they run offensively and defensively? Yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, defensively, I don't want to say completely different, but significantly different. I mean, there's there's some carryover in the in the you know tree from from where coach Pete has been and then Pete Kwiatkowski the defensive coordinator have been uh with you know Justin Wilcox who was there before so there's some carryover um and it's it's similar enough that I think their their guys have you know been able to play really fast and in, in the transition that that you know that hasn't been much rust or 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 you know hesitation in their in their play as far as translation you know almost from from one one staff to the next uh offensively there's elements that are very similar uh, a lot of the no huddle no huddle stuff that that they had done before is similar and then they also have you know a ton of two tights um bunch misdirection all you know all the things uh reverses play action all the, you know all the stuff that that they've done in the past it was better you know it was better not not nearly again perfect uh, it's it's funny we, we we tackled better but we still had I think it was uh, 24 missed tackles for 186 extra yards and so you know 186 extra yards versus 200 yards is the difference between winning and losing but that's <laughs> still not good enough uh, and and you know sometimes uh, there there were other other factors at play um, but but we played harder you know, uh, and, and, st and continued to, to play hard. Um, got a bunch of guys in there that have never, never played much, if at all before and played significant, uh, roles in there. Henry Mondu got the, his most significant playing time, Sam camp, Danny Mattingly. Those guys played a ton, uh, in, in, in other people's stead. Uh, Tony Washington ended up finishing, you know, pretty well. 
uh, Toronto Prevo had a couple couple big plays. Tui Talia had a couple big plays. Uh, and so just, just a matter of kind of shoring everything else up. But com- uh, communication-wise, again, those guys did, did a nice job of that last week, and it carried over. Tyson. When, uh, when Keenan left on Saturday, you saw uh, Byron kind of move more out of the backfield and into uh, more of a receiver's role. If, uh, if say, Keenan happened to not play this week, would that be kind of a similar situation we see where Byron's getting more passes? Or just working more into the passing game, right? We'll see. I uh, know you like that answer. Um, we had, yeah, we had some different things planned last week with with um, with kind of Byron and, and Keenan in there, and so it's a matter of this week pushing both the the young receivers and the young tailbacks to to kind of fit whatever the best role is going to be, and if that's a a two tailback deal or you know Byron at tailback and another receiver remains to be seen after after tomorrow we'll totally tighten that down and and uh get it projected toward the game 